and we're back welcome to fetch quests my name is joshua today i wanted to show you some dinkum gameplay and tips i'm definitely early game but it's been wonderful it's been a lot of fun so yeah let's get right into it and i wanted to show y'all just some tips that i found in the early game thank you all so much for being here if you've set up a bridge anywhere on your island, you can actually pick it up by pickaxing. You'll see the bar there, and as you get down to the bottom, it doesn't destroy. Uh, I was worried maybe that it would kind of scrap into parts, but you actually do get the full uh, bridge back in one piece. Here it is. Something neat about the bridge is it will lengthen depending on the space in between. So as you can see here, I built this out originally thinking this is how long the bridge is. But if I come over here where there's a much wider gap, you'll see here <laughs> the bridge just kind of lengthens. So that's a neat tip uh, in case you didn't know. The size will adjust to fit your needs. I don't exactly know just how long <laughs> the bridge can go. Um, okay, that does appear to be the max limit. So, still a pretty long bridge. Hopefully that helps. As far as I know, you cannot pause the game. So if you look at the time right now, it's 1024. If I go into my journal here, wait a few moments, it's 1028. Uh, if I go into my backpack here, take a look at my inventory, you still see the time and it's moving up top. If you're in a conversation, so it's 1034. Oh, yep. Still shows the clock, so as you can see, it's still passing. I'm here in the crafting menu, time is still going. If I open my mailbox, 1058, still shows the clock. If I lie down, 1101, just resting my eyes, time still passes. I've yet to find an activity that actually stops time in the game, so. If y'all have found something and have any quick tips, let me know. If you're wanting to create land, use your shovel and pick up some dirt anywhere. Uh, it can be from the ocean floor and keep stacking it on top of itself until it creates a platform. As you can see here, it's uh, this sand is underwater. I can shovel it up. You can also swim and you don't lose the dirt. So that's nice. You can change tools cycle back you still have your dirt as you can see here I'm just trying to build this up and yeah it'll just kind of stack like that you can also dig pretty deep so whether you can see the cursor or not I know the area that I'm gonna pick up right here's the tile and if I just go one in front it's down below me I can still press X or uh, you know click the mouse it'll pick it up and I've created a hole now I don't know just how how far down the game will let you dig. But let me try it again. Yeah, I'm still going. So <laughs> the ocean's pretty deep. Just because you can't see the cursor doesn't mean your tool won't work in that space. Also keep in mind that whatever the ground is, whether it's sand or this uh, kind of red dirt, whatever it is that you shovel up, it'll remain on your shovel and that will be the color uh, that goes down when you drop it. So you can create, you know, red dirt areas by picking up red dirt and moving it. Uh, you can literally just terraform, right? And if you want sand in more areas, pick up sand and move it. Digging from the ocean is a good idea as well. Once it gets past this level where you can walk on it, once it gets past it, you can only swim. Uh, so there's going to be some spots where you're like, hey, you know what? I can't go out there anyway from walking. I'm going to shovel this up if I want some sand. Now, if you're looking to plant some trees, you're trying to grow an orchard, or maybe you just picked up a fruit that's kind of far away from your home base and you want to transplant it closer, planting is really easy. You just dig a hole, select the fruit, and it won't show you a marker. So just kind of face the hole that you just dug. And on a controller, it's the left uh, stick that you click in. Uh, on the mouse, I'm not sure. It might be right click. But whatever uh, button you use to drop, it'll drop in the hole and then you go back to your shovel. That should still have sand or dirt on it and you just cover it up. And there you go. 
you'll see a little shrub there. Um, and after a few days, it'll grow. That's how I have these here. Grass is a little different. And as you explore your island, you'll come across different types of grass. Here I have uh, a fur grass seed and a tropical grass seed. And whichever spot you are wanting to place the grass, you simply, on a controller, press X. Grass is a little different. So you don't have to use a shovel and dig a hole. You can just place grass right on the ground. However, you're unable to place grass seeds on sand. But if you're on soil here, and I want to put some tropical grass, you just press the X button. And there you go. Got a nice little patch of grass there. You can hold the button down, and it'll just quickly drop it. Oh, and apparently uh, planting grass gives you some points. Nice. I found in the early game, uh, the easiest way, before you get the metal detector to earn money, is using your... <laughs> is very poorly using your bug catcher net. No, but catching butterflies uh, and other critters seems to be, uh, for me at least, the easiest and quickest way of making money. Fishing is great, um, but it doesn't seem to be as fast and as lucrative as using your bug catcher net. The draw distance is fairly good, so you can usually look out on the horizon and see uh, different butterflies flying up in the air. There are a bunch of different shells, uh, sand dollars that'll wash up on the sandy beaches all across your island. I've picked up quite a few, but I noticed when I was selling them that I could have made a lot more money if I spent all of that time I took finding them uh, instead just hunting butterflies. So make sure you get out there, use your bug catcher net. You know the drill if you played Animal Crossing. As an example here, let's just see. Let's see how much these net me. Eh? Net? Get it? So just a few here, and he's giving me $2,000. So for me, that's quick, that's easy, and I hope that helps. When you talk to your villagers, you have the option to chat. And then once a day, you can click the need anything option. And they usually have a little fetch quest that you can partake in. Or they'll just maybe sell you some clothing items. So it's a great way to get new clothes. Like I got this pirate hat. But they'll ask for something. Like in this case, three palm wood planks. Now, if you notice there, I have John at one heart. Uh, so far, to get him to one heart, I completed four tasks. Uh, each one filling up a quarter of his heart. So if you offer to help him out, do note that if you say you'll do it and you fail to complete it for the day, their heart goes down. Uh, forget by how much. It might just be a quarter of a heart. It might be more. But if you're trying to keep up your relationships with your villagers, it's a good idea to keep your word if you're going to say you're going to do something for them. You can say that you, you can't. You can decline the requests and that doesn't seem to have a negative effect. In this case, I'm going to say I'll do it. You'll see that it's added to the journal. You can see there, collect three palm wood planks. And it looks like I already have those. So let me go ahead and turn them in. Select I wanted to chat. And say this is for you. Now, the game does make you select it from your inventory. But thankfully it highlights the item that you should be giving to them. You can select individually the amount. But in this case, he needs three, even if I say seven. He only takes uh, the necessary amount out of your inventory. Oh! Yeah, sometimes you get money from them. Sometimes you get crafting recipes like this. That's awesome. If I check my inventory, I do still have four remaining. Oh, I did not talk to this lady. Oh, this is a good point. I haven't talked to Clover all day. I've been trying to just make this video for y'all. I think it's like 4 p.m. It could be 5 p.m. But as the day goes on, make sure you take advantage of the people visiting because they usually are selling something. Now you can talk to them and have a conversation. But what I've realized is like the animal, uh, the person was there selling a chick or chook. I talked to them and I tried to complete a task for them thinking that's how uh, I get them to sell their items. When in fact, I just needed to click on the chook that was behind them. And I didn't do that. So I missed my opportunity. In this case, <laughs> uh, I think Clover sells clothes, and I didn't go view any clothes that she was selling. As you can see, they remain on the island, they walk around, 
Uh, so they can talk to him. They can ask him. Perform a task for him. I don't think I have any furniture. Do note, when it comes to the tasks, I, on three different occasions, I think it was two from Fletch and one from uh, John, they asked for bags of cement. And mind you, uh, I mean, I hope this isn't a spoiler. Uh, John's Goods is really the first uh, permanent location that you get in the game. But before John's Goods, he has a little tent here. And he didn't sell the tool necessary to create bags of cement, which I found interesting. Uh, I figured if they were give you tasks, like, hey, I need you to get me this item, I figured it would be an item you could get at that point in the game. <laughs> so three times I said, yeah, let me get that for you. And I was racking my brain trying to figure out how do I craft bags of cement? So to save you that heartache, just wait until you've upgraded John's goods. You have that store. You just buy a stone grinder. And then as you have stones in your inventory, you place them. Just like you would if you're placing meat on the campfire or wood on the saw or ore in the furnace. Uh, it takes five ore, by the way, to make a, a bar. But as you see here, you put in one rock and you get a bag of cement. So hopefully that helps you. It took me like three days, y'all. I'm not even kidding you. And I, my relationships with them kept going down because I was failing to fulfill my task. Reloading the same day does not change the vendor or the new visitor uh, in the tent here. I've tried many times and maybe there's a small chance, I'm not sure, but in my testing uh, the visitor remains the same. So if you get the person who sells you clothes and you want the person who sells you animals, uh, restarting that day will not change who's here in the tent. What you'll have to do is rest again and then wake up the next day and hope uh, that the person you want there is there. Some trees can be cut using the basic axe, whereas other trees will require you to upgrade your basic axe. You can tell by the uh, bouncy sound it makes when you try to chop it down. Mm. Fishing in this game is really fun. See, in the line, ah, maybe. As he turns, I'll let go. I'll let go. A little bit of tension. I'm not reeling. Uh, and even though I'm not reeling, it's still... I don't know what's happening. Let's uh, let's maybe find some easier fish. Is that a thing? Sure, that's a thing. Easier fish. Let's try to catch this guy. Okay. I'm not reeling in. Okay, now I am. I let go as he turns. Reel him in again. Let go, and I reel it again. All right, blue spot flathead. If you have the bulletin board, similar to the visitor on your island, uh, the item on the bulletin board does not change uh, by resetting the game. If you quit and then reload your save, we'll have the same request. So similar to uh, trying to get a different villager, your best bet is uh, doing whatever task you want to do for the day, go to bed, uh, and then hope that the next day it's a task that you like or can complete. There are going to be some creatures in the game that look like fish or look like something that you can catch with a fishing rod. If you are unable to snag them on your line, your best bet is to just try to go underwater. Here on the controller, I can press Y. And look at that, a king prawn. If you've tried catching these guys, these little jellyfish, uh, with your fishing rod, you'll be unsuccessful. Uh, I see them as like dingoes, basically. So they can poison you if they attack you. Uh, just like that. Uh, so your best bet is to kill them, and they'll drop jelly that you can't pick up. I'm not far enough in the game to have a recipe, a crafting recipe for jelly, uh, but maybe you are. Leave a note in the comments below if you can tell me what jelly is used for. But for example, throwing your fishing rod will not allow you to catch a shark. And I'm very scared right now. Um, please, please do not. Just please don't. Just, uh, sir, uh, now that I got its attention, so while you can't fish it, 
Uh, you can attack it. Oh my goodness. And then get wrecked. They drop, uh, Shank. Oh my good. <laughs> Did not mean to fall and die. Oh, no! They drop, uh, Shark Shank. Oh, and then you're gonna realize that your spear broke and you're gonna hack at him with your axe. How about out there? You like that? You like that turkey? You don't. I'm doing this for y'all. I want y'all to know that. Ah! From behind. Okay. Check it out. We got some flake. Right, let's pick up this shark meat. Ooh, ha, ha. Once you're back on dry land, throw some flake on the barbie. Right. Get some cooked flake. Freaking. I had cooked myself some meat on a stick. Uh, gives me 35 health back and 15 energy. And the cooked flake gets you a nice 20 and 20, which is great. So, uh, the meat on a stick requires three meat and a mangrove stick and only gives 15 energy. So if you're looking to boost your energy, killing the shock and throwing some meat on the bobby is going to be a, a good bet for you. Also, while I'm here, haven't used one yet, uh, but the old keys are going to be used for when you venture into the deep mines. Uh, I guess you'll find maybe some gates or some treasure chests and uh, you can collect these old keys and uh, use those while you're down there in the mines. Sometimes you'll get lucky and see that nature is uh, in full swing. After experiencing the circle of life, predator and prey, uh, you'll have access to some easy pickings, uh, as long as you don't get targeted. Ah! <laughs> Passing out will do damage to your tools. Alright, the last tip I have for you today is on trapping. So once you acquire the necessary license, you'll be able to craft traps. So I just have rank 1, I can craft a simple animal trap. I should also be able to uh, craft this collection point. However, what you need are hardwood planks, and I have not yet upgraded my axe. But I can at least show you uh, the idea behind trapping. What you do is you put down this collection point, trap an animal in the cage, drop the cage in the collection point, uh, it gets carried away and then you'll make some money. So some animals are easier to catch than others. This dog, for example, if I drop this trap, he's gonna break out. So when this happens and the animals are breaking out, uh, it's kind of like Pokemon, uh, catching Pokemon, honestly. Uh, we all know to catch Pokemon, you weaken them and then you throw your Pokeball. So in this case, Weaken them a little bit, and then drop the trap. And look at that. He's no longer shaking aggressively. And now you can carry the box, and you drop it wherever you have your little pickup spot. Uh, in my case, I do not have one. So you get to be free! Oh, you're not mad at me anymore. This same idea works on crocodiles, and I have not tested on sharks. We want them really low on health, because I just have a simple trap. It's like having a regular Pokeball, and I'm trying to catch a level 45 Pokemon, you know? Wow, my health is low! Okay, let's drop the trap. See if this works. Yeah, look at that! Very minimal shaking. So, if the uh, drop zone was close, I just carry this crocodile. He looks very uncomfortable and you can get some money all right y'all i hope you've enjoyed this video dinkum is such a blast if you haven't played it yet or picked it up definitely do it's not too expensive uh, it's available on steam you will absolutely have a great time if you enjoy you know life sims farming sims stardew valley animal crossing type games this is going to feel right at home for you it also has a little bit of a minecraft aesthetic with the with the blocks at least that kind of geometry but thank you all for being here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to Fetch Quests for more content. I'll be playing more Dinkum. Let me know if you want more videos like this. Don't forget to go do some Fetch Quests of your own. Because sometimes the rewards are worth it. Bye, y'all.